Back to Tuscan bandoliers. We've got the Lawrence of Arabia bandolier, the Boer War bandolier. Now the last one is the long belt pouches he uses around his waist. And I thought it'd be really interesting to try and do that without using leather. So I've got a wax canvas. I'd start out with the same canvas we used for the bucket. And then I otter wax the entire thing. And the more you wax it, the more leather-like it gets. So this is an interesting experiment. I want to see just how, how well we can do this. So that's what we're doing today, is this. Okay, belt loop. There's six of them. They're an inch and a half by six by three. I'll show you how I did. I cut, there's six of each of these. Well, five because I cut the test piece first. These are the belt loops. They're gonna get folded over and stitched. These are two inches by three and a half inches. These are the side flaps. There's two per bandolier. They are two and a half by nine. The underside of the front flap. That is a little more complicated, but it's roughly four inches wide, seven inches long. It's got a taper that starts at about the four inch mark and it's one inch in. And then we have this thing. This is the main body of the flap, or the main body of the, the bandolier. It is 21 inches long. It's got the same taper here, and it is also four inches wide. I cut out six of these. It's just standard inch and a half foam. And that is three by six by inch and a half. Let's start putting this thing together. So since this is a Tuscan, I can do some things I'm not normally afforded to. Um, there's also no real visible top stitching, so I can use a much darker thread. So hopefully it's a bit more visible. All I'm doing is I've folded these in half so the seam is right down the middle. We're gonna do a zigzag stitch all the way across and then just a finished seam on the end. These aren't really visible at all, so. Just like with most things, I am going to daisy chain these from one to the next to the next. Now I'm just going to do a uh, stitch along the edge just to lock everything in. All right, we've got these laid out from this end, the flap end, I'm measuring down eight and a half inches. I'm putting a mark and then I'm putting a mark at the center. Measure down eight and a half, putting a mark, and then one in the center. Making kind of a T. We take a belt loop and put it pointing towards the top. I also want my seam side to be on the inside, the part that I seam together. That way when we fold it over, the seam is on the inside. If you look here, you can see what we're doing. I'm putting a little loop here because most older bandoliers have like a D-ring in them. I want to have the option in case I feel, you know, weird and want to add something. So I'm just going to do that with all these. Put them in, 
spin it. Make sure I have the right side, which I don't. And that's it. I'm just going to keep doing that with the other four. Three. The other three. What we do now is we're going to do a zigzag stitch here. We're going to fold it over, do a straight stitch, and then a little box stitch at the bottom just so we have a belt loop. I want one side of my needle to be off of the stitch and then one over. That way it locks this uh, edge in and it doesn't fray. So that gives us a fully locked in edge. We're gonna do, we can do that the same with the other four. Okay, this is where we're at. We want to fold this over, fold the belt flap over, and restitch. We want roughly half an inch of overlap. Half an inch. Then we do the same with all of the others. For the next part, we are gonna go in a very small zigzag stitch all the way around. We're gonna make a box, right? Go down, over, up, and back. For the bottom zigzag, I'm going at a, a five, so it's a little wider than you would expect. With the needle on the outside of the turn, we're gonna go down to a two, which is a really narrow. Is there a reason I'm doing this? No. It's similar to what I do with X-wing uh, flak or X-wing ejection harnesses, and I find it mildly entertaining. So that's it. We do that on the other ones. Since I'm on the, the narrow stitch, I'm gonna stick with the narrow stitch. I'm just going about the width of the foot. There are two ends to these, right? There's the end with the taper, 
and then there's the other end. We want to make sure we're folding it with the belt loop on the outside. We just want to fold it over and zigzag all along the edge. And we're going to do that with all of them. So what I've done is I have taken, with the right side out, I've taken the, the smaller piece and s pinned it in place. What that does is it gives us a clean edge. There's no, no fray, no, no top stitching. It's just a nice simple edge and it looks a lot like the bandoliers Peter was wearing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna stitch all the way around this at a half an inch. Just like with everything that gets turned right side out, snip the corners. We are not gonna turn these right side out yet though. Right side, we're gonna measure down six inches. Gonna put in a mark then an inch and a half and put a mark. Same thing on the other side. And that is where the sides come into play. We're gonna transfer the marks over because we're gonna give ourselves a half inch seam allowance. Same thing for the other side. I know it's weird, but I like marking from the middle out. It's one of the few measurements that matter. And since this is gonna have flaps that go over it, we're not gonna be able to just lay it down and go. So that gives us room to sew from here, from pin to pin, which is this seam here. 
When I say by flaps, because we have these flaps. So now just do that to the other five. Now we sew half an inch from the edge to there, from pin to pin. This is where things are going to start making a little more sense. We're going to need to cut these, this corner off here on each one. Right? This isn't necessarily op or, uh, needed, but it makes what we're about to do pretty easy. So just cut these corners off. And do the same thing to the other side. Now I'm trying not to cut the fabric underneath. So we're going to fold this along here. See? So this makes kind of a 90 degree angle. Well, it doesn't make kind of a 90 degree angle. It makes a 90 degree angle. Pin. Pin. On this side, you need to kind of pay attention when you're sewing and stop when you get to the end. So we're basically sewing a box and boxes are less than entertaining when you're trying to do one solid piece on the outside like this. If I were using six different pieces, it'd be way easier. I don't think it'd look as good. Turn it 
We're gonna do the same thing for the back. We do not have a convenient stopping point on the back. So, what we're gonna do is measure and mark. Stuff that in the corner, go down six inches, which should be right about there. Perfect. Same thing for the other side. I'm going to use the mark from the other side as my point to stop. So now we have the entire thing completely inside out. What we're going to do is we're going to sew half inch starting here, and all the way down, all the way back, all the way down, all the way back. But first, we're going to pin the other ones. So I'm going to show you what I just did one more time. Now that you've seen the, the end process, maybe these weird little steps in the middle will make a little more sense. We got this here here. So we're cutting a square off of the bottom of the side flaps, which will let us rotate the fabric a little easier. If we didn't do that, we would be fighting with a inside corner. That'd be right there. Way easier just to cut that off. Fold half an inch and lay it flat. Make sure you take your time at this point because these corners, although covered, most of them could be covered, they're kind of noticeable. You know, they're your bandoliers. You want them to look nice. If you're using thicker canvas, this step is actually easier. As most thicker canvas, you can just crease. Since this is a drop cloth, I have to fight with it a little more. So now we're gonna do half inch 
from this needle all the way around. So what we do now, we're going to fold these top flaps so they touch at the top and we leave them at the bottom. That'll give us a tapered flap, that way we don't have uh, weird corners sticking in weird areas. And just fold the top down and pin. Show you again. Fold one side over, fold the other side over, just fold the top down, and pin. What we're going to do with these is a pretty wide zigzag stitch. It's going to go up, across, and then down.
Try not to sto try not to sew the uh, excuse me. And again. Try not to sew the fabric underneath. Try to keep your thread in the needle. And that is all of the sewing on these bandoliers. Let me finish off the rest of these and we'll, uh, we'll get to the rest of it. Now we turn it right side out. I did the other ones. I got a little impatient. My camera's battery said it was too hot and needed to cool. Aftermarket batteries are garbage. Let's turn everything right side out. Take our little thing, form, filler, Now for the fun part, turning this into this. We're gonna do that with wax. To be specific, I am using outer wax. We're gonna iron it. So we're gonna iron it, get nice and warm. Outer wax, and rub it all over. Parchment paper, don't use wax paper. 
bad for your iron. And the more wax you use, the more leather-like the appearance becomes. You want to work in coats, not just, you know, dip it in melted wax. Use, wear, tear, it all smooths out the fabric. And the smoother the fabric is, the more leather-like it looks. It's the lack of grain that, that makes something look leather-like. What this wax is doing is just kind of speeding that up a bit. Nice thing about using canvas, it will uh, move. You can thread the uh, Sam Brown button without actually ripping holes or cutting or anything. Tucking, a little bit of fiddly bits from one to the other. So here it is, the last of the Peter Diamond bandoliers. All three of the ones you wore in A New Hope. They're easy to make. I think they look pretty good. I'm happy with them. Um, again, with these ones, the more you wax them, the smoother they're going to become and the more leather-like they're going to appear. Even as canvas, they don't look bad. I'm pretty happy with them. So, go out and make some bandoliers. <laughs>